This is the Pebble Pursuit Rotor Task. You can see it's got a target, a red ball circle, following a circular route around the screen. And you have to follow with your mouse um, for, turns out to be four trials. Each trial by default is 15 seconds long. It's timed so it will go around the circle twice on each trial. And so the whole thing takes about a minute under its default settings. So because of that, people have often used it in different uh, publications as a very short measure of motor skill or motor learning. You might want to uh, do more trials if you really want to look at a learning curve because there's just sort of four trials. Uh, it's also set so it looks like the ball lights up if you're on top of it. This would make it suitable for doing um, touch screen because you can sort of see when you're on the target. Um, when you're done, we give subject and you know the person this more detailed feedback, and you get both um, time on target for each trial. This is going to be on this, uh, because it's 15 seconds, this is going to be a measure of milliseconds out of 15,000. So here I was on target about two-thirds of the time. Here's I was on target about one-third of the time. Um, and a mean deviation. The target radius was 25, so you can see here I was off by, a, on average, 42 pixels each time, um, which sort of maps onto the lower time on target. As my time on target increased, my mean deviation decreased to under the radius. Um, so that's the a basic setup of the task. Um, probably eight or nine years ago, I wrote a blog post that covered it. it. This is actually modeled after a task from the, probably from the 40s or 50s, that uh, was a turntable. And you use this stylus. The turntable spun around um, pretty quickly, a lot more quickly than the example set up on Pebble, and you have to follow with the stylus. And whenever you made connection with the target, then um, then it set a timer, and you could see how much time was on on target. So um, this blog post you can read and gives you some details about adapting or uh, messing with the task in different ways. Um, this task has been used maybe 30 or 40 times in the literature, the Pebble implementation. Um, for a lot of things, you know, as a secondary measure of maybe genetics or aging or some other factors, um, you can see. So it's been really established to be sensitive to a lot of different things. Um, uh, so, uh, you can read uh, by just searching under Google for Pebble Pursuit Rotor to see some examples of that. Um, so the standard version, which uh, is implemented, takes about a minute. It's four trials of 15 seconds a trial. and But there's a lot of different ways you could run it um, and settings you can use. So let's look at some of the settings. Um, there are five settings you can adapt, you can increase the trial time. So this might be interesting to see within a trial if people start getting tired or something. The number of trials you can adjust. The target size, here I've uh, I've changed it from 25 to 50 so it's larger. The speed, the default speed is 0.133 which um, means uh, one rotation every seven and a half seconds. So for a trial time of 15 that's two rotations in 15 seconds. And then the radius here in pixels of the route it needs to follow. This wasn't available in earlier earlier releases of Pebble, but it should be in the newest release. Um, so if I were to save this, uh, I, the parameters we the new parameter setting which you can select here because I've named it uh, this will now be maybe a little more like the. Um, the versions used in uh, the the old physical versions because it's going a lot faster. So let's see what happens. Now I'm using a tra uh, like a touchpad for this, so my 
my uh, precision is not very good. But you can see the target's a lot bigger now and it's going a lot faster. So this is almost a completely different uh, sort of movement that you have to do. It's, it's not so much um, following as uh, anticipating. Let's see. Of course, you wouldn't want to do this with a touchpad unless you want to maybe compare a touchpad to other pointing devices. And we'll go through four trials here. And you can certainly guess that performance is going to be a lot worse here. Um, if you have, this is a r relatively small screen too, so I think if it's going this fast, it might be useful to do it on a bigger screen and make the radius more than, make the radius like 300 or 400 if you have a big enough screen to handle that. That might um, provide a, a more, maybe a more sensitive measure because it's a lot more difficult. And it, um, in the standard measure, I think your normal mouse skills that you use can prepare you for that. But this is a little different than what people are accustomed to with mousing. So there really is something to learn if you try sort of one of these difficult ones. So here we have four trials in a row. Actually, I got worse over time, um, both in the mean deviation from the target and the um, time on target, maybe because I was talking. Um, and I've spent about a third of the time or less actually on the target although the target was bigger because it was going fast. Um, so that's some ways you can adjust it. Now, if you want, if you're interested in the data, the data gets saved in a couple different ways. So um, that was, I guess, 98 and 99. So let's look at 98. That report file is going to be saved in the data subdirectory and you can see all the same values are appear here as appeared on the screen. These are within Pursuit Rotor, the data subdirectory, and then a folder related to this, the participant code we used. Um, but we can also have um, instantaneous position um, in this file. So this doesn't give you any summaries, but this would allow you to do analysis in other ways, like uh, there's a paper that used Pebble to do some tremor analysis and so maybe if you do some modeling of the movement you can measure second derivatives or something that will help you understand how jerky the movement is. So here uh, the subject code is, uh, is recorded on each um, row and the trial and so there's going to be uh, um, hundreds of trial one a bunch of steps, this is just a counter. The time of each step, the time elapsed since the beginning, this is the time since maybe the program was started. Um, the target x and y coordinates, the mouse x and y coordinates, here's whether you were actually inside it, inside the target, um, the total time spent on the target, the, the difference between the mouse and the target center, and the total difference that you can come up with an average at the end, so if you look down, we can scroll down and see, um, you know, there's 5,500 rows of this. So there's about 1,200 rows um, or samples per trial. And you could do your own analytics here. Um, what might be interesting is to, if you were to plot, um, insert chart the X and Y coordinates. So we try this. This doesn't separate by um, the separate trials, of course, but you can see these are the paths that I where I was actually moving the mouse to throughout. All right, so that's the data. that's available. Um, and there, the only other thing to look at would be if you wanted to change or translate the instructions. If you 
you want to translate it, change this to your uh, language of um, two letter language code, select this and hit translate test. And now there are five pieces of text to try to tra that you might, or four things of text to translate. Um, here you want to, these little markers say um, bracket trials bracket, you want to leave that the same because that will fill in parameters um, to show them, um, to show in the instructions. And, or you can translate them if I wanted to, to uh, translate to Spanish, you can do ES and then um, let's see. So if I were to translate to translate to Spanish, ES, save file. Now a new translation file would have been saved. These are just CSV files that have this marker. So if you want to translate via a spreadsheet like this, you can as well. But um, it's handy to be able to do it through here. Well, that is the Pebble Pursuit Rotor task. Pebble is available, it's all available for free. To download at pebble.sourceforge.net. And uh, if you found this useful, please like the video. Thank you.